Shelley, he definitely is doing things in an unorthodox manner. Is it all bad? When you look at the current results, you'd have to say, yes, by any metric from a shareholder's perspective and agree he now owns the business, but he is not creating value. The CEO's job is to create a business that actually delivers profit and operate, right, to achieve their overall goals and objectives. And it's not clear what Elon's vision actually is, the strategy itself, and even the management team he's put in place to execute it. And by the way, a, a CEO's job is not to upset and alienate their primary paying customers, which are advertisers. Hmm. You know, he comes from the Silicon Valley um, culture where it's move fast and break things. The idea of laying off 50% of your, 50 of your staff pretty willy-nilly definitely has people concerned about things, but he is a bit of a hero when it comes to a large part of the Silicon Valley uh, culture. Jeff, you, you talk to these CEOs. If you were talking to some of the Silicon Valley types, though, they might look at things a little bit differently. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. Any second now, it's uh, I'll be getting a nasty gram from, from Larry Ellison or somebody asking me, when's the the last time I sent a missile, a spaceship up 350 miles into the sky into the, uh, and then brought it back down into a one mile square, uh, you know, section of the ocean. He is a genius. And, and at least for now, the world is better off having Elon Musk in it than not. Uh, but still, you've got to ask. And, you know, Shelley is on a, a dazzling array of boards. Those boards are so well managed. You wouldn't find any of those boards with these those problems of style and substance, uh, strategy and succession. This is uh, many great uh, tech heroes, like all great heroes. In fact, behind me, I've got a book called The Hero's Farewell right next to my uh, Squawk Box mug, uh, is that uh, that book describes great heroes that they start out as redeemers, they, they're saviors, but these dragon slayers early career, by later career, start to resemble the very dragons themselves. And he's becoming the biggest detriment uh, to his own companies. Uh, six companies? If he works the 12-hour day, which he pretends to work, but despite his is clowning around, he's got maybe uh, an hour and 20 minutes per company. That's not quite enough to stay on top of these fluid markets and dynamic technologies. And so, adding to that, can I just okay. add to that quickly? But sure. you know, to Jeffrey's point, each company and each situation a company's in requires a different management style. Elon is outstanding when it comes to building a company from scratch, right? Creating big, hairy, audacious goals, as Jim Collins talked about and actually make it happen, right? Goals that you set out 30, 40, 50 years in advance. I mean, sending rockets into space, electric cars, Starlink, Elon's terrific. But that style of leadership and of management, that entrepreneurial, as you said, break things, move quickly, is what you do when you're building a business and creating something new and disruptive. When you're actually taking an existing business that already exists and is already operating, that needs to transform, it's a different set of leadership skills and talents. And very few leaders, I don't care who you are, can actually be excellent at multiple types of styles and multiple types of situations. So Elon's just in a situation that doesn't fit his particular skill set. So, Shelly, Elon says that he is looking for someone who, to take over the CEO job at Twitter. And as soon as he finds somebody who's capable of doing that, he's going to hand over the reins. What should that person, what type of person should that person be? You need a leader who's good at transforming. Twitter needs to take the core capabilities it's got and develop, a, if you will, a refined value proposition. They've got to determine what they want to be and how they will get there, and they need a leader who can come in, clean up the mess, frankly, that's been created, set a clear vision, the right management team, and also be clear, have a lot of clarity. When you're going through transformation and change, the CEO's number one job is to really be clear, clear to employees, to stakeholders, to customers, Right, to investors, et cetera, in terms of what are we trying to do and how are we going to make it happen. 